If there's one thing that I've mastered over the past decade as a software engineer, it has most definitely been creating. You see, just like many of you, I started off as a regular developer. I mean, I wrote my first line of code in MATLAB for my robotics team. From then, I went to UCLA to study the human consciousness. After UCLA, I went to NASA as a computer engineer. After NASA, I went to the Fortune 500, so the public sector, and worked as a software engineering consultant. In three years, I climbed from junior all the way to manager, one of the fastest promotions ever. And then I quit to found my own firm, AB Analytics, which is what I run to this day. The reason I'm making this video is because I've had experience, both as the employee as well as the employer when it comes to the software space. So I know a little bit about what is happening with the tech scene right now. And I'm sure you've seen the news, everybody's saying tech is dying. I don't have to explain it, some of you are living it. You try to apply to a job, there's over a thousand applicants for the same exact job. And whereas before it used to be at least people in your own country, now it's worldwide because of H-1B visa and outsourcing and all that stuff. Plus, on top of everything, you now have AI to worry about. So it can look pretty gloom if you're a software engineer, whether you're a new software engineer who are just about to finish your degree, let's say, or you're just thinking of getting into college, whether you're a veteran software engineer looking back at your past career and thinking, okay, what are my next moves? This video is for you. So first and foremost, I want to talk about something very specific, and that is, do you actually have to be worried about the job market as a software engineer? Short answer is yes, but not for the reasons you might think. Most of you might think that it is AI that's going to replace you. I can tell you straight up, AI will not replace you. Now, software engineers who use AI will have a higher chance of getting into jobs that software engineers who don't use AI get, obviously. So in a sense, software engineers who use AI will replace those who don't use AI. But AI isn't really your biggest competition. Your biggest competition is actually offshoring. So most US companies, part of FANG even, have started offshoring talent to other countries, specifically Eastern Europe, as well as Asia. So you have a lot of Indian developers, Pakistani developers, Ukrainian developers, now starting to get into the US job market and the Canadian job market in general, just Western job market in general. Because as a business owner myself, I understand this too. Why should I go and pay a six-figure salary to a US developer when I can find one for 10 times cheaper in a different country that can do just as well, if not sometimes even better, right? So fundamentally speaking, because it's a capitalistic country, everybody's gonna be focused on getting costs as cheap as possible and making as much money as possible. So it's only natural that most US devs will be priced out of the market. So if you're a US dev watching this, what do you do? Because, I mean, what else can you do, right? If you're a fresh grad, then your options are very limited. It's gonna be near impossible for you to land an internship or any type of job for that matter. And if you're already a veteran in the space and you've noticed that maybe your paycheck has dwindled or you have the golden handcuffs, you wanna leave but you really can't because it's too comfortable and you realize inflation is catching up, what do you do? Now, it might sound a little biased because I do come from a software engineering background and I have gotten into entrepreneurship. I believe the only real solution for the US developers who are currently in this predicament, let's call it, the only real solution is to get into entrepreneurship. And let me explain why. You will still have a subset of devs, okay, who will succeed at a nine to five. They will kill it. And this subset of devs will be part of the, essentially, the smartest individuals if we place them on the IQ curve. If you think of the IQ bell curve, right, you have middle of the people here, and then you have some of the smarter people on this side. As time goes on, jobs become harder and harder because AI will continuously replace the easier jobs but people all of a sudden don't become smarter and smarter. So the jobs that are left over are going to be left over for the increasingly competent people. Meaning you will still have that top 1% of devs who will be sought out in all aspects, as backend devs, frontend devs, as quants, whatever the case. Top 1% will be successful in the nine to five setting. The bottom 99 will not, especially the more time goes on. That number will only dwindle and dwindle and dwindle. So if you're not part of the top 1%, and even if you are, let me just say you will do better in entrepreneurship than at any nine to five anyways, but if you're not part of the top 1% of software developers, what do you do then, right? Because you know you will not be too desired in a nine to five environment, and how do you get even into entrepreneurship? So it should be obvious to you that in this day and age, where everybody's talking about AI, everybody's hyping all this stuff up, and you have offshore talent getting into the specific job market, you will have a bunch of new issues that will arise. And you are already seeing this in real 
time. First and foremost, study was recently revealed that 95% of all AI projects are literally useless. They, people who pay for it do not see an ROI, meaning only 5% of such AI projects are actually useful. So there is still an immense gap in the market for anything related to AI when it comes to a business owner's perspective. But that's not all that there really is for you to do as a software engineer. You see, the one thing that I realized, whether I was working at a 95 or whether it's my own firm that I'm running and I'm hiring people, I don't really look for people with technical skills. Now, don't get me wrong, they still need to meet some type of a baseline. But whenever I'm hiring or whenever I applied and I got jobs, technical skills weren't the main focus. They were the baseline all people really wanted to know was, okay, do I meet the baseline skills? Yes, I do. And then they valued other skills way more than my technical skills, specifically communication, sales, marketing, anything else that I could bring to the table. And that's when it hit me. As a software engineer, your greatest advantage isn't in the fact that you know coding. It isn't in the fact that you're able to write this software. It's in the fact that you already have that skill and you can use the time that other people don't have to learn everything else. The marketing, the sales, the communication, all these things. Because once you graduate university, let's say 22, 23 years old, you already have a baseline, right? When it comes to software for what you can do, okay? There's a lot of things you still can't do because you need job experience, but nevertheless, when it comes to technical background, there is a baseline that you can kind of operate at, okay? You know, the basic syntax for a few programming languages, you know how to think logically, solve abstract problems, system level thinking, and so on and so on. But what the population is lacking most of the time, think about it, what do non-technical people always look for? Technical co-founders. Look at Silicon Valley, look at Y Combinator. Another interesting fact about Y Combinator, right? What is it about? It's literally attracting startups, right? To fund and see who ends up being successful. There are more people that got rejected from Y Combinator that end up successful than actual Y Combinator people that got accepted. So think, how funny is that, right? So I say all of this, once again, to highlight my exact point that it's always been there. You as a software engineer will not be replaced technically. And even if you were, that is not your main forte anyways. It is simply your baseline. You are a lot more than just a coding monkey, okay? If you are a software engineer who already has that coding baseline, there are so many skills that you can tack on top of one another to get to a place that AI can never touch and offshore talent can never touch, okay? Let me go first with AI route. AI will never be able to touch your soft skills communication, how you make people feel, if you can connect technical to non-technical people, how well you can explain technical things, technical results to non-technical individuals, how well you can communicate your value, what you did technically, right, tied to business outcomes. AI will never be able to replace this because it misses that humanistic approach. At least, I'm saying never, I mean in the short term. And within the next, let's say, 10 to 20 years, it won't be able to do this. When it comes to offshore talent, what's the one thing that offshore talent doesn't have that you have? Trust. Okay. When you're a business owner, it's completely different from how a big firm operates. A big firm is all about costs, lowering their costs as much as possible. They know they can take an offshore person, they can train them to some degree, and even if they're worse than a regular person, they're still getting paid less than 10 times. So the loss isn't going to be too much. However, when you're a small business owner, or even when you're a medium-sized business owner, you cannot afford to trust somebody offshore that doesn't have your full trust, right? that's not even close to the culture that you're at, that doesn't know the problems that you have, that doesn't know any of these things. So generally speaking, if you're a small or medium-sized business owner, you will go with somebody that you trust, you will go with somebody that's local, you will go with somebody that is at least a little bit verified. So what you're seeing is a shift. And this is, I'm seeing the exact same thing. People are moving away, small and medium-sized businesses are moving away from hiring offshore talent. They're focusing on actually getting actual A players from a local, more of a local setting, and you're seeing big firms hire more offshore talent. So everything's sort of switching around. And this is a cycle that will keep repeating. Back in the day, what ended up happening? Back in the day, you had a lot of small and medium-sized business owners. They would go to Fiverr and Upwork to get offshore talent to build out their things, right? Now you have AI, so most go the AI route. And if AI can't do it for them, then they go for actual developers who know what to do. 
right? So the middleman was cut out now. The middleman which used to be the fiber network is now cut out. They don't go to them anymore, right? And instead, those individuals are being used by big corporations. You have a lot of big corp, especially in the thing, they use offshore talent because it's cheaper for them. And your goal is to capitalize on this cycle. That's always, you know, it's cyclical. It will always continue happening. It will always, you know, balance each other out. So your goal is to actually capitalize on it. So how do you capitalize on it as, let's say, a U.S. developer? Well, the way you're going to capitalize on it is as follows. You really only have one thing you need to do. And that is identifying a problem that you can solve. Now, when I say identify a problem that you can solve, I mean specifically a problem that you as a software engineer can solve. I don't mean you need to go out and create a SaaS. That's not what I mean. If you have a problem that you can solve with or without your coding skills, right, you can always apply code as a leverage to it. So if you see something that can be, let's say, solved as a service, proceed with that and see how you can apply code to make that more efficient. Say, use AI for automations to help your process. Okay, but the main point that I'm trying to make here is you have the baseline skills. You need to now watch out for AI and the offshore talent. And if you're going to be competing, you're going to be competing in the top 1%. And if you're in the top 1% watching this video, now you'll be better off with a business than without. But nevertheless, you'll still be somewhat successful in a 95 environment. But those of you who are not in this condition, who are not in this position, I should say, you need to lock in and actually identify such problems in your day-to-day -day life in your network, in the local area around you, businesses around you, in whatever industry maybe you're familiar with or your friends are familiar with, and identify these problems to figure out how you can solve them as a business. You have to stop thinking like an employee and you have to start thinking like a founder. Because even in my case, right, when I made the leap from employee to founder, the reason I said the one thing I got better at was creating is because that is my core skill as a software engineer. It's not coding. Coding has never been my skill. It's been creating. It just so happens that whatever I'm creating, most often than not, I use code to create, to bring it to life. But my skill, my core skill, has always been creating. And sometimes for me to create something, I need to be able to articulate the value of it. I need to showcase it to people. I need to be able to distribute it properly. That's where marketing, sales, and all these things come into play. So case in point, if you are a software engineer, especially a mid to senior level software engineer currently in the United States, wondering what the heck is happening to tech, you are right in assuming that it will probably be continuing to go downhill, but that does not mean all is lost. In fact, you have a lot more opportunity now than ever before when it comes to actually starting your own business. It's never been easier than before. When I say starting your own business, you don't have to confuse it with creating a SaaS, creating the next billion dollar startup, but rather it can even be a simple one person business. It's just you finding a problem and solving it at scale for multiple people instead of working for one company, solving it for one person. So without further ado, I hope you enjoyed the video. And as always, thank you so much for watching and have a good one.